Are you a teacher or educator thinking about going to school to be a school counselor, but you're wondering what grad school would be like? Well, this video is for you. I'm going to tell you all about my experience in grad school. I'm going to talk about the classes that I took. I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure and what you can expect when you get to grad school. I'm even going to talk a little bit about why I chose to be a school counselor in the first place. So first, let's talk a little bit about the structure of a typical program, and I'm going to explain what I experienced in mine. You have a couple different options. You can go to a school online where you're strictly doing virtual classes where you're answering questions or you're interacting with your professor on Zoom or Skype or Teams or something like that, some type of platform. Or you can go in person or you're driving on campus attending classes with a group of other students called a cohort. And the final option is hybrid learning where you're kind of doing a mix of both of them. So when I started my program in 2008, it was all in person. And I actually loved it because I got a chance to interact with the same group of students throughout the whole program. And it was awesome because I'm still friends with them to this day. So the way my program was set up was it was on weekends. So on Saturdays and Sundays from 8.30 in the morning to about 4.30. It was an accelerated program. So that's why it was like a weekend all day long. And back then I really wanted to get my master's degree and get it all over with. And it took me about a year and a half, almost two years. And again, it was accelerated because I went in the spring, the summer, and the fall. I took about 10 to 12 hours each term, and I was actually working full-time as a middle school Spanish teacher, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in this video. So you're probably thinking, that was a lot to take on working full-time Monday through Friday and going to school Saturday and Sundays from 8.30 to 4.30, and it was like really like an additional job because they gave us a lunch break and everything. I'm going to talk a little bit about the way those classes were set up and I'm going to give you an idea of some of the classes that I took because I'm going to look at my transcript and I'm going to show you what classes I took. I got my master's in school counseling from Cambridge College, which is a school that is based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Well, at the time I lived in Memphis, Tennessee and they had a satellite campus. I don't even remember how I got connected and found this program, but some way I found it. I guess it was God sent. And again, it was, I think one of the things that really appealed to me about this program was that it was accelerated and you can get your master's degree really quickly. I got my iPad and I'm going to share with you some of the classes that I took by semester. So if you see me looking down, that's the reason. So let me pull up my transcript. So I started in the spring of 2008 and I took nine hours. The classes that I took were introduction to counseling, counseling in schools, group dynamics, Group Counseling and Human Systems. And the last class I took was Professional Seminar School Guidance and Graduate Research. And it was a class that helped you prepare to write your dissertation. Within that group of classes, my favorite was the group counseling class because early on I learned about the dynamics of working with small groups of students. We learned about how to organize small groups, how to communicate with families, and how to make them successful in making sure that students were engaged. So now we move on to the next semester, which was summer 2008. I took ethics and professional issues for school counseling and mental health practitioners, assessment, appraisal process, intelligence and achievement testing. And honestly and truthfully, that's one of the few classes that I don't remember a single thing about, but obviously I passed because I got an A in it. Then I took professional seminar, which was the second class to help you write your dissertation. So I did it in stages. And then I started my school counseling practicum. So I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the practicum experience in this video. So now we move on to the fall of 2009. I took personality and counseling theory, multicultural counseling, children and adolescents in context. That was actually one of my favorite classes because it talks about diversity, equity, inclusion, and, and learning how to work with all types of students and families. Then I took professional seminar three, which is another part of the dissertation process. So you build upon writing those different chapters in each one of these classes. And then the last uh, class that I took in that term was the independent research class, another class to help you write your dissertation. My research topic was factors that affect the motivation of African American males in education. I know that was a mouthful. Try writing it. I don't even remember how many pages it was. It was at least 40 or 50 pages I ended up having to write. So now we move on to the spring of 2010. I took child and adolescent psychopathology, career counseling. That was one of my favorite classes because I learned how to do career days, guidance field work, and internship. All four of those classes were a 1.5 hour credit where you're getting real life experience working on a site in elementary, middle, and high school where you're shadowing a school counselor is already on duty, you're learning from them, and you're actually getting experience on the job. 
My last semester was the summer of 2010, and I took Human Development Across the Lifespans. I actually still have that textbook. My last class was Counseling and Consulting Techniques Lab. Those are the classes that I took for grad school. I really, really enjoy each one of them. So the way that our work was set up is we did a lot of group work, we did role plays, we had to create presentations and present them in front of each other and give each other feedback. We did case studies where we focused on some issues in school counseling. We wrote a lot of papers in each one of these classes. And again, this was before AI. So I actually had to write them and research and go find articles and journals and different things. But it was part of the learning process and it was fun. Well, it may not have been fun then, but it definitely stuck with me and I learned something from the process. So I already mentioned some of my favorite classes that I took, and that was like multicultural counseling. And I love the class where it's talking about small groups and group dynamics. I still use some of those theories and practices as a school counselor to this day. So I was working full time at the time as a middle school Spanish teacher. I was teaching grades six, seven, and eight. And I had a mix of native speakers and uh, first time learners. And I really enjoyed teaching it because I got a chance to be creative. One of my biggest strengths is that I'm a creative person and I can adapt different lessons, but I had to learn through trial and error. So that's, I'll talk more about that in another video, but I didn't go to school to be an educator. I actually got my bachelor's degree in Spanish because I wanted to be a translator and travel around the world and work in banking. And it didn't work out that way. At the time I was working as a teller at Regions Bank and I was looking at the classifieds in a newspaper thinking, what in the world can I do with a Spanish degree? And I saw an ad for a middle school Spanish teacher at the local school district where I lived in Memphis. And I was like, well, I might as well try and apply. Long story short, I applied. They called me back literally immediately. It was like the next day. And I went in for the interview. And I remember like it was yesterday. I stopped to get gas and I was so nervous and I ended up spilling gas all over my pants. But I mean, just a little bit, but it was enough to where it was like it was throwing my whole vibe off. But thankfully, I didn't let that bother me. So I got in the interview and I met with my principal at the time and he was showing me around the school and then we came back to his office and he said, okay, now I'm going to take you to your classroom. He didn't even interview me. He literally gave me the job on the spot because he needed somebody right then and there. And when I tell you that was a whirlwind because I didn't go to school for education, I learned a lot while on the job. I learned a lot about classroom management. I learned about how to differentiate lessons how to create engaging uh, presentations and activities for students. These things that I learned as a classroom teacher, they helped me be a better school counselor when I was going in and doing classroom counseling lessons. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the internship process. So I actually got a chance to do my internship. A lot of the hours that I got were actually on my site. We had three school counselors at my school, one for each grade level, and I was so fortunate to be able to shadow her a lot of the times like for different events that she hosted on campus I helped out with those I helped her plan things out I was able to sit down on a lot of her sessions with students of course with their permission and with hers Latrice Noel is one of my friends still to this day I keep in contact with her and she was absolutely amazing I love learning from her and she actually just transitioned from uh, middle school counselor she was at her campus for over 20 years the campus that I worked with her at she was still there up until just this year when she transitioned to be a high school counselor. So hey Noelle, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for everything that I learned from you. I would highly encourage you to take your internship or your practicum seriously. Go in there, learn as much as you can, be a sponge and soak up everything that you can. Don't be afraid to ask questions and actually take on some tasks like hosting a small group or meeting with students individually and be open to feedback when your site supervisor can tell you some of the things that you're doing wrong or help you and coach you through those things. Be open to listening because those are the things that you're going to need in order to be a school counselor. You're going to need that experience and you're going to need somebody who's already there to help and guide you, especially if you get hired as an elementary school counselor and you're on your own and you're just a long ranger on your campus. Thankfully, when I got hired for my first job, I had an amazing co-counselor. Her name is Lori Johnson, and I still keep in touch with her too. So that year, when I first got hired as a school counselor, I was working at an elementary school. It was K through five, and they decided to open up that school to make it a K-8 school. So they already had a counselor for the kindergarten to fifth grade. That was Lori. And they hired me to be the middle school counselor. And it was amazing because I only had about 150 middle schoolers in grades six, seven, and eight. And that was the dream. I can't even imagine 
what it would be like right now to have 150 students only. I have 420 plus on my caseload at the moment, and that's only seventh graders. But again, I learned so much as my first year as a school counselor. I'm actually gonna make another video because there's a lot of things that I have not shared in my previous videos about my first year as a school counselor. So if you would love to hear about my first year, type in first year counselor, and I will share my experiences with you. So now I wanna talk a little bit about why I chose to be a school counselor in the first place. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I was a middle school Spanish teacher. I loved it, but I didn't really see myself being a teacher for a long term. And I wanted to do something that had a little bit more flexibility. The main reason I chose to be a school counselor was because of some of the things that I experienced while working as a teacher. At the time, I was already doing a lot of conflict resolution, working with students with social emotional needs. I was working at a Title I high poverty school, and so my students were coming in with a lot of issues from at home and things that were going on in their neighborhoods or their communities, and I was spending a lot of my classroom time managing those things while teaching them life skills. So it got me to thinking, what career or what job in education can I do where I'm doing all these things already? And so it really was like a light bulb that went off. I was like, I might as well go to school and get a school counseling certification. So now fast forward, I enrolled in Cambridge College. I finished in about a year and a half. So I graduated in 2010. I got my master's degree in school counseling and um, I got certified. I took the practice test at the time, the ETS practice test. I think they still have it in Tennessee. Um, they don't do the ETS in all states. Each state has their own certification test, but I passed it on the very first try and I was so proud of myself and I got my license as a school counselor, but it, honestly, it took me about four years to find a job and that's a whole nother video. And if you wanna hear my story about why it took me four years to find a job, type in the comment section, job hunt, and I'll share a video about that. I hope this video inspired you to want to be a school counselor. And if you have any types of questions, feel free to go in the comment section and type those questions. I respond to each one of them, so I will be sure to answer any questions that you have. And if you want an easy way to support my channel, like this video. And if you would like to buy me a coffee, go to the link below. I love drinking coffee because it keeps my creative juices flowing so I can create videos for you.